The Theory of Light by Sipiwa and Lovu. Plot Summary, Part 2. The Present. Valentine is in the office of the man himself, waiting for him to speak as he considers his character. He thinks that the man himself is quite malicious and intends on causing harm. The man himself subtly threatens Valentine when discussing something that was so precious found on the Beaufort farm and estate. He points out that Beaufort is occupied by war veterans who are squatting illegally and something needs to be done. While he's telling Valentine this, he also admits that Beatrice still holds the deeds to the farm. And Valentine understands. Time has now passed in Cookie's chapter, and we see that Cookie is visiting Beatrice at the Princess Margaret retirement home. What we seem to notice is that Beatrice has Alzheimer's, and we also see that Beatrice and Jeannie are now friends. Jeannie visits her at least twice a month for a girl's day where they go for spa treatments. Jeannie and Beatrice have so much in common that race and age do not matter when it comes to their friendship. This can be seen through their love for sunflowers, a childhood at Beaufort, a hero for a father, and a brave, defiant spirit that they both have. Valentine visits Beatrice to explain that the organisation would like to evict the veterans, but she explains that she had sold the deeds to the survivors for a dollar, and that was fair and square. Jeannie is at Victoria Falls. The discovery made on the farm prompts her to do the following. She sends the 1965 World Atlas to Marcus, a postcard with an image of Victoria Falls to Crystal. She must trust the postal system to send these things to America. She needs to send a colourful bird to Menentle and Mordecai. She needs to take Beatrice out for a spa day. And the most important thing, she needs to stop taking her medication without Vida noticing. We see that this chapter is quite unclear as there's a gap in the timeline of the book. Teleology, the study of purpose. Marcus and his parents are in an elevator with an elevator operator. Marcus expresses his desire to become an elevator operator one day. They then meet Mordecai and Marcus hears Jeannie's voice and runs to the room that she is in. He notices that her smile is different. It no longer reaches her eyes the way that it did on the Beaufort farm and estate. She now smiles like his mother does. Eunice, who is Dingani's mother, feels as though Jeannie would be no good. Dingani is adamant that they adopt her, but Eunice is opposed to this and she is used to having the final say. Although in this situation, she is overruled. Dingani has spent most of his life trying not to disappoint her, but he has disappointed her now, as she points out. She then goes up to Crystal's room and divides it in half, using a tape to prepare for the girl. See Jeannie's arrival, as well as her first three years at the Masukus, from Crystal's perspective. She initially thinks that she will dislike Jeannie, because she imagines Jeannie to look like this beautiful princess and act like a princess. But when she sees how Jeannie actually looks, she seems to find a liking to her, and this is because she believes that she will always be superior to Jeannie. They become close over the next few years, and are only interrupted when Marcus comes home from boarding school, which Crystal seems to resent. Jeannie then later on makes a friend at school, Suzanne, and Crystal becomes jealous. Jeannie is three years older and experiences puberty before Crystal, so Crystal feels as though this widens the gap between them. She's confused about Jeannie's obsession with this new children's show, Button Moon, and Jeannie does not want to miss this show. So when Crystal's mother is late to pick them up from school, she insists that they go to Crystal's father's office to watch it on the television that they have there. But when they get there, they hear Crystal's parents arguing at the office, and Jeannie suggests that they can watch it at Suzanne's house, which is close by. Initially, Crystal stays behind, but changes her mind and decides to run after Jeannie. Jeannie runs back across the road towards her, but is hit by Cookie Carmichael's car. In this moment, Jeannie is caught 
by Vida in his informal pushcart. We then see the entire accident from Cookie's perspective. The reason Cookie drives into Jeannie is because she was distracted by Jesus. She was thinking how he was the bravest man that she had ever known. Her whole life has led up to this moment. She had one son who was sensitive and was attracted to Vida de Villiers, who we come to know as Jesus. He was sent away for war and was killed by a landmine. She left Emil as she finally found courage, but was still feeling guilty. So, she envies Vida as he chooses not to carry out without her son. Vida loved Everly, but also Rosmond. So, Everly was Cookie's son and Rosmond was one of their friends. He thought that he was only attracted to men until he met her, so he is confused but finds acceptance with Everly and Rosmond. When Everly is killed, Rosmond leaves to join a convent, and Vida loses his parents in a car accident. Due to all these losses, he hopes that he will be killed when he joins the army. But when he encounters Golide, Golide does not shoot him, and he survives the war. He vowed to never love again, because it will never be as meaningful as it once was in his life. After 12 years of living in the streets, he observes how the arrival of the street kids upsets the balance. He had to break the code of never interfering one day, and he willingly intervenes to save Jeannie, and decides that the meaning for his life now is to save her when he sees her bleeding in his pushcart. Years have now passed, and it is the day after Crystal's 13th birthday. Jeannie and Marcus are sitting under a jacaranda tree, she tells him about the elephants crossing the Zimbizi River and the emotions that she felt when she saw that. And he finally realizes that he has feelings for her. Jeannie feels like they are finally on the same page as she has always had feelings for Marcus. He kisses her and she kisses back before stopping, which confuses him. Crystal wakes up to Marcus shouting which is very unusual for his character. Downstairs in the kitchen, Marcus is confronting their parents while Jeannie sits looking as if she has been crying. She hears both, well, Crystal hears both her father and Jeannie say that Jeannie is HIV positive. Marcus is confused as he believes it can only be sexually transmitted. His parents say it could also be transferred from mother to child or from a contaminated blood transfusion. Jeannie is adamant that she did not get it from her mother, and Crystal then recalls Jeannie's accident and feels as though she is to blame for Jeannie's HIV-positive results. She loses trust in her family for not acknowledging that she is the reason to blame, and Jeannie leaves on her 18th birthday later on in the chapter without warning and goes immediately to find Jesus.